Hello everyone and welcome to the talk show of the Computer Science Master Program at Leiden University. My name is Olga Gadiatska, I'm Associate Professor at Leiden University and I'm the host of the today's uh, talk show. Before we begin, let me briefly introduce uh, how the program will be structured today. So first we will do a brief round of introduction, who we are. Uh, then we will have a sh very short presentation about the Master in Computer Science program to help you to refresh the memory of the program and also to set up the stage for today's discussion. Then I will interview the guests in the studio today who are the staff and uh, former and current student members of the Master in Computer Science program. And finally, we will have time to answer all the exciting questions you have about the uh, Master in Computer Science program in Leiden. And uh, please already start sending in your questions. We will already be collecting them uh, during the talk show and we will try to answer all of them uh, at the end during the Q&A. Uh, so let's start and uh, let me first maybe introduce myself a bit more. Uh, so as I said, I'm associate professor here in Leiden. My research is in cybersecurity. And uh, actually I didn't study computer science myself. I studied mathematics. I have a PhD in mathematics from Novosibirsk State University in Russia. And after my PhD, I worked in Italy and in Luxembourg before finally moving to Leiden in 2019. And currently I'm a leader of a research group here on organizational cybersecurity where we study challenges related to securing companies and organizations today, which relate to technologies, but also frequently to people and processes. Uh, so that was about me. And Matthijs, could I ask you to introduce yourself? Sure, of course, thank you, Olga. Uh, my name is Matthijs van Leeuwen. I am Associate Professor in Data Mining and Machine Learning at uh, LIAX, uh, Leiden University. I'm also the Director of Education of all the LIAX Master programs. Those are the Master Computer Science, uh, Master ICT in Business and the Public Sector, and the Master uh, Media Technology. So uh, in terms of teaching, I teach a course on statistics in our bachelor program, and I also teach a course on information theoretic data mining in the Master Computer Science. Um, I did a computer science myself uh, back in the day in Utrecht. Uh, after that, I did also a PhD in Utrecht on data mining. Uh, after that, I became a postdoc in, in Leuven for some years in Belgium. And then I moved to, to Leiden in, in 2015. And uh, well, over the past years, I've been first the study advisor of this program, uh, then the program manager, and now the director of education, meaning that I know this uh, program really well. Thank you very much, Matthijs. And also we have a student here today. Uh, Rashid, may I ask you to introduce yourself? Uh, thanks, Olga. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rashid. Uh, I'm a second year master's student at uh, Leiden University. And after studying uh, information technology engineering in India, uh, I, I wanted to explore further the field of uh, parallel computing and uh, distributed systems. And uh, for that reason, uh, I uh, started the Advanced Computing and Systems program at uh, Leiden University. Thank you, Rashid. Uh, finally, we have an alumna here. Uh, Julia, could you briefly introduce yourself, please? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Julia. I'm a PhD student here at LIAX. I started about a year ago, um, and I study uh, automated machine learning approaches uh, for satellite imagery, so I try to spot large methane emissions from space. Thank you, everyone. And before we go to the interview part, I would like to give the floor to Matthijs to briefly introduce the Master in Computer Science program. Yes, yeah, so uh, I hope you have already seen the general introduction to the Master Computer Science program uh, that you could see at other moments. But I still want to show you a few slides to just remind you of what the program is and also uh, what, what, what we try to do and, and what is meant for. So within the Master Computer Science program, we really try to let you take a deep dive into a field of computer science of your choice. And this can be any of uh, many disciplines that we have in our institute, um, but you really build upon the knowledge that you got in the Bachelor of Computer Science, so building upon those foundations and diving deeper uh, to, to learn more about the specific field 
Uh, and there, we, what, what characterizes our approach is that we combine theory with experiments and also applications. Uh, so in this journey, uh, you are trained as a researcher um, so that you are equipped with all the skills and also knowledge that is necessary for a career as a computer scientist in the, in the future. Um, so very briefly on a high level, uh, you probably know it's a two-year program. You can start in se uh, September or in February, uh, although we recommend you to start in September because it makes scheduling a bit easier. And we have seven specializations, um, each with a focus on a different field of computer science. And well, for education and science communication society, there are separate information sessions that you can attend these days. Uh, so in today's session, we will focus mostly on these five sort of core computer science specializations. So we often get questions about, uh, well, what can you do? Well, here you see on a very high level, all the courses that we teach in this academic year in the fall and the spring semesters. Uh, so maybe it's too small to read, um, but the main message here is that there's a lot you can choose from and there are many opportunities for taking courses of your own interest. Um, so if you want to know whether computer science is the right program for you, then you should definitely look at uh, what we expect you to know prior to starting the Master Computer Science. And uh, I put down there a link. Uh, it's, you should be able to, to find, that also, find that also if you go to the information page um, that there is specific prior knowledge and skills that we expect you to have before you come to Leiden to start your master computer science. For example, excellent programming skills, um, understanding of algorithms and data structures, uh, academic reading, writing, presenting skills, uh, and also basic knowledge of complexity and computing theory, uh, because these are all foundations for what we do in the master program. Uh, so this means for admission that uh, you are eligible for admission if you come from a research university with a bachelor degree in computer science or artificial intelligence and from applied university similarly with um, also a degree in computer science or bioinformatics. But then usually you are required to do a pre-master uh, of up to one year. Uh, so if you come from applied university, we always encourage you to contact the study advisor early. Uh, there's more details about admission, but this is the, the big picture. Uh, and that's it for this quick overview. Thank you very much, uh, Matthijs. Uh, we will now move to the interview phase, but uh, I would like to remind our viewers that we are already collecting the questions for the Q&A, so please don't forget to send your burning questions and we will try to answer all of them in the Q&A part. So my first question is also to you, Matthijs. So why should students study computer science master program at Leiden University. What is so particular about the program here? Yeah, I think that's a very important question. And of course, uh, I think there are many reasons for choosing master computer science program in Leiden. Uh, but let me give you three reasons that I think are particularly important. Uh, so first of all is that you have a lot of freedom. So I already showed you the, large, the list of specializations. Uh, and then you also have a large list of electives that you can choose from. So you have a lot of flexibility and freedom in composing a study plan that is really tailored to your own interests. Uh, second, uh, we now have a few hundred students in the master program and we are growing, but still it's relatively small scale, which makes for a very friendly and personal atmosphere. Uh, and last is that all our research, all our education, I should say, is research driven. Um, taught by researchers, meaning that you uh, are really equipped with not only skills, uh, but also knowledge of uh, the state of the art in your field of computer science when you leave our program. Thank you very much, Matthijs. But I would also like to pass these questions to our students. So, Rashid, maybe you would like to tell us why did you choose to study in Leiden? Uh, of course. Um uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I wanted to explore further the field of uh, parallel computing and uh, distributed systems. And uh, after researching uh, uh, a lot in uh, European schools and also in the U.S., uh, um, uh, I found uh, uh, the M master's program here in Latin University to be more suitable to my uh, aspirations. And 
uh, as Matthias mentioned, uh, it is uh, the master, master program actually has a good balance of compulsory and elective courses, and uh, it provides you the flexibility to uh, uh, schedule the courses as per as uh, uh, however you want. And uh, I think yeah, that uh, uh, was uh, that worked very well for me. So I decided to pursue the masters here in Leiden. Thank you, Rashid. And uh, Julie, why did you choose to study computer science in Leiden? So um, I first started studying astronomy in Leiden, and there I learned programming, and I really fell in love with that. So I decided to switch to computer science, and I just it was a natural choice to to look at Leiden, um, and I really liked the program here because the AI specialization really suited also the skill set I already had from computer science, and I really like how much freedom you have in choosing the courses. But I think maybe most of all also was familiar with the atmosphere here in Leiden, I really loved it and I didn't want to leave. <laughs> thank you, Julia, and thank you, Rashid. And could you maybe also share some of your experiences uh, with the program? Maybe you have done some interesting research project or internship that you would like to tell us more about? Maybe Rashid, we could start with you. Uh, yeah, uh, along with my master's, I also work part-time with the Leiden Learning and uh, Innovation Center, which is also part of the university. And uh, there I wor uh, work uh, on developing uh, VR platforms for uh, uh, VR applications that are developed for the faculties of Leiden University uh, uh, that are used to discover and uh, distribute knowledge uh, uh, with VR using VR headsets like Oculus and HoloLens. And along with that, in my MSc program also, uh, I had a very interesting assignment uh, in the course of uh, distributed systems. Uh, specifically, uh, we uh, investigated the robustness of consensus algorithm, and specifically in draft, uh, we had to uh, uh, analyze the leader election performance, how it performs, and uh, how, uh, how it affects in real life. And uh, also, so uh, this was very important in the challenging those uh, 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 challenging the robustness of these uh, algorithms uh, in uh, large scale distributed systems. So I found that very interesting. Nice. Uh, and Julia, what about your experiences? Well, I have a very fond mem memories of a specific uh, project for Corus Robotics. It was the final project, and with a group we had to program a robot. So this was during the pandemic, so most people uh, used some online simulator, but we were fortunate enough to meet up in person. So we built a Yeti Borg dog that could respond to your name and um, the face of a human. Um, I was responsible for printing some parts for this robot, so I had to design them online. It was the first time I did it, and I did a very poor job because it didn't end up fitting, and we had to duct tape everything together. But still, it worked out, and it was really rewarding to collaborate um, on a project like that, and also to do something more physical, apart from programming the machine learning models, what I mostly do. Thank you. So Matthijs, Rashid and Julia have told us uh, about their project, but could you tell us some more about what are the research opportunities that students can expect uh, when uh, doing this program? Yeah, so I think you already got a little bit of flavor from, from the two, two people here talking about their experiences. So that, that most of our courses are research driven, meaning that small research projects are often part of, of a course. Um, and this gives students the possibility to get hands-on experience with uh, many aspects of doing research, um, thinking about the proposal, reading literature, uh, doing the research, writing it up, and so on. Uh, and in the end, this also leads to what, what you could say is the, the cherry on top of the cake, which is the, the, the master thesis research project. And this is a really large research project, um, of 42 credits, so this spans uh, the whole second year with a uh, focus on the fourth semester where all students work full time just on their master thesis project. And this is a great opportunity to do research really embedded in one of the many research groups that we have at the Institute uh, or to go abroad and, and do this elsewhere. Uh, and if you are more interested in doing more application driven research, then you can also take this as an opportunity to do an internship as the company or an organization um, and, and do, do this there. Um, so yeah, I think there are many possibilities and, and um, yeah, research is part of, uh, of a large part of the program. Thank you. 
Uh, now I'm also a bit curious to hear about some maybe challenges that our students have uh, in this program. So Julia, maybe looking back, could you recall some particular challenges related to a course or a project that you have? Yeah, so I experienced a burnout before I started my master's computer science. So I was already trying to really um, focus on, on keeping boundaries between private time and, and university. So that helped me a lot. But still, sometimes some um, semesters were a bit uh, more work than others. But I feel that at Leox has a really nice network. And if you're struggling, or for example, there's a very nice coach that you can talk to and it can really help you out. So um, in the end, even though sometimes it was a lot of work, I, it, um, um, I came out OK. <laughs> It's good to hear. Thank you, Julia. And Rashid, uh, what do you find the most challenging? Mm, yeah, um, uh, upon, like for my experience of one and a half years in the master's program, like uh, uh, with all the courses that uh, you take, uh, you, uh, sometimes you end up with a lot of deadlines and uh, it gets uh, sometimes challenging to manage all those deadlines and finish your assignments on time. But uh, I think uh, uh, being in contact with your teammates or uh, your uh, uh, lecturers and professors and your uh, teaching assistants is very important and uh, starting working early on the assignments and uh, managing them uh, well is uh, also very significant for uh, um, I think uh, successfully um, completing all those courses. Thank you Rashid. So Matthias based on your experience what do you find that students struggle most when doing this program, what could be the challenges uh, for our students? And what do you recommend for our students and future students? How can they prepare better? Yeah, so um, one thing in particular that we see for some students is that they struggle with deficiencies that they have when they arrive um, and start doing their master computer science. And this can be quite problematic as the pace in the program is quite high. Yeah? So usually in each semester, you take five courses, meaning you also have different programs, co projects going on and so on. Uh, so to catch up with deficiencies that you have during the semester, during the program is really hard. Um, so for that reason, we really emphasize that it's important that you have the, the, the sort of the prior requirements that we expect students to have, such as uh, knowledge uh, and skills in programming and at least Python or C++, um, and basic academic writing, reading skills, and so on, uh, algorithms, data structures. Uh, and, and also in the, in, the, in the slides before, I showed you this, this link where you can also see for each specialization, what are the requirements uh, for, for, uh, for incoming students. And uh, I really encourage you to look at those and to see if you have all those skills and, and, and if you have that knowledge. If so, then very welcome. Uh, otherwise, yeah, maybe think about it uh, or think about how to make up for those deficiencies before you start the program. Uh, and in case of doubt, you can always contact our study advisor. Thank you. And I think in the on-demand presentation, it was mentioned that students from an applied university or HBO in Dutch, uh, they would typically require a bridging program before they can start a master here. Uh, so do you have any recommendations for such students? Yeah, so if you are coming from an applied university and are interested in starting in our master computer science program, then I definitely encourage you to contact the study advisor as early as possible, uh, because in almost all cases, a uh, pre-master program is required. And uh, we tailor this individually to you as a student to, to make up for the deficiencies that you have uh, relative to what you would like to do in our master computer science. Um, so it's, it's important then to be early, because if you apply without talking about the pre-master beforehand, then uh, it's, it's happens quite often that the application is rejected and of course that would be a pity. Thank you and I think also many of uh, prospective students uh, who watch this session they are curious to know about how a typical week of our students uh, look like so maybe Rashid you could share something about your experiences uh, how many classes do you have or did have how many opportunities you had to collaborate with fellow students and maybe also if you have time to enjoy Leiden, our great student seat. Yeah, of course. Um, 
like at this moment i'm uh, currently focusing full time on my master thesis and along with my part time job and uh, so uh, i don't uh, see my friends th- that often <laughs> at the university but uh, like uh, um, i see uh, but i see some of my friends when i go for training at the usc and uh, also uh, i try to keep uh, some time on the weekends so that i can go to the farmers market and uh, if uh, if it's a nice weather then uh, it's it's a must to go to the market i think thank you Uh, so I think we are collecting already some questions posted online, but before we move to them, uh, I think it would be very interesting for people viewing this also to know what are the perspectives about uh, kind of having a diploma from our Master in Computer Science program. So Matthias, maybe you could talk a bit about some job opportunities that our students have. Yeah, so actually this is a very hard question to answer because our students go in so many different directions. Um, but in general, uh, there is a really a very large demand for students with uh, a degree in computer science. Um, so uh, the, the, the last time we, we, we looked into the data, uh, like almost pretty much every student gets a job within months after finishing. So it's really possible to find a job. And in my experience, uh, the, the challenge really is in deciding what is the type of job that you would like to get after completing the Master of Computer Science. Um, because uh, students go in all kinds of directions. You can become a machine learning engineer, uh, you can become a data architect or a software engineer or some team leader somewhere, um, a data science consultant or, well, uh, you name it. There are many, many possibilities and, um, yeah. I think also from your experience, you can confirm that there's a lot possible. So it's important to think about what would you like to do and and then check the opportunities. Thank you. And yeah, I think I can add that uh, some of our students become cybersecurity experts, which I'm very happy about. Uh, I think we can uh, maybe move to the Q&A part uh, now because uh, I see that we already have some questions. Uh, If you still have uh, burning questions, please uh, send them in. We will start answering them uh, now. And I think that the first question uh, is from Hannah, and this uh, follows nicely what we were just talking about. So what are the typical careers or research areas that follow the different specializations that we have in the program? Yeah, so uh, this uh, also is a nice cue to add something is that, uh, of course, I mentioned now the types of jobs in industry or government. But if you are liking research, you can, of course, also continue in research in academia. Uh, like Julia, who became a PhD student uh, with our Master of Computer Science, you are also definitely qualified to do a PhD uh, in any university uh, you would like to do. And uh, to get back to this question, um, yeah, so uh, with the Master of Computer Science, you can still go in many directions. But of course, with your specialization, you already have some deeper knowledge. So if you do, for example, AI, then you're a bit more likely to become a machine learning engineer than if you do uh, advanced computing and systems, then maybe uh, something like um, um, uh, some kind of architecture or security specialist or, uh, well, these things are more likely. Um, But in general, you still have a lot of opportunities, I think, also to switch later. Nice. Uh, and I don't know if uh, Rashid or Julie maybe would like to add uh, something about it. So Rashid, what are your ideas about your future career after a master's here? Uh, like after f- I finish my master's, uh, I would like to work uh, full time as a software engineer. And uh, I, uh, ideally, I would like to find a research field that I can focus on. But uh, yeah, uh, I have For the moment, I think a software engineer would be a good option to continue after my master's. Thanks. Uh, Yeah, so we are waiting for more questions. And the next one is from Art, uh, who is asking, if you have interest in two specializations, can you take them combined? I think that's a question. Yeah, I think I should answer that one. Uh, So uh, the specializations, especially the five core specializations, uh, are characterized each by having six mandatory courses. And in addition, you have a lot of freedom also to choose electives. So if you want to specialize in different fields, you can do so by choosing the electives to, to match your interest. So yes, this is possible. But if you would really like to get two specializations on your diploma, if that's the question, then the answer is no. 
because then you would basically have to do the whole program twice so get mm. 240 EC and yeah twice doing master computer science doesn't really make sense so uh, no this is not this is not a possibility thank you Matthijs and I think the next question is also from uh, uh, to you and uh, Yasmina is asking considering AI and data science they both offer very similar courses and why would one choose one over the other which program would you advise <laughs> between the two <laughs> well uh, uh, it's hard to advise <laughs> one of the two um, but uh, they, I agree, they are similar, but they also differ in important aspects. So uh, AI is quite broad in the sense that it entails many techniques related to artificial intelligence. So that can also be, for example, optimization, um, uh, the decision support, um, all kinds of things. Also, for example, without data, whereas in data science, most techniques, almost all focus on using data. And, and that also uh, characterizes sort of some specific courses that are only available within either of these specializations. So for example, mm. in, in AI specialization, we now have a course on artificial creatures, which is only an elective in that specialization. Uh, and similarly, in the data science specialization, we have a number of courses that are really related uh, more to statistics, uh, advanced statistics, which are also uh, thought by uh, the people from the statistics master. Uh, so there, there is a di clearly clear distinction, although they are also definitely very similar. Both sound very exciting, I would say. So the next question is from Art again, and uh, he asks for the specialization bioinformatics. Is it possible to do more biology-based or neuroscience-based subjects as specialization courses? I think it's again a question <laughs> to you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So in principle, uh, there's in the, the prospectus, you can see all the courses and uh, the things that you can do definitely also as electives. Uh, if you want to deviate from what is the standard program, uh, then this is possible if you get um, permission for this from the board of examiners. So if you have a good motivation for why you think for your your development that uh, you, you want to replace some of the courses with other ones, you can file a petition uh, in, in consultation with the study advisor, and then the board of examiners will decide if this is allowed. But I can imagine that it, if in bioinformatics you want to do a bit more biology while still also doing sufficient amount of computer science that this might be possible. Uh, thank you. I think it's great that we have this flexibility embedded in the program and students can also tailor the program a bit to their needs and uh, wishes. Uh, we have the next question from Hannah and uh, she asks for pursuing a career as a software engineer or a developer, which specialization is uh, recommended? Uh, maybe we can start with Matthijs, but I'm sure Rashid also has some <laughs> ideas <laughs> about this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would say that uh, advanced computing and systems is probably the most natural specialization then, but it also depends on whether you have a preference to become a software engineer in a specific field or more generic. And so advanced computing and systems uh, goes very deep, is very advanced in, for example, parallel computing and, and these things. Um, but if you are interested in becoming uh, more like software engineer for machine learning, then maybe AI would be better. So I think... There's no single answer there. Okay, and uh, Rashid, what's your mm, take? I think I that? agree with Matthias. Like, uh, I wanted to work more in uh, distributed systems and cloud and uh, all those kind of stuff. So uh, advanced computing systems was quite ideal for me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it totally depends on the field that you want to focus on. So that's, that might help you to choose the program you like. Uh, okay, then the next question is from Effie, and uh, the question is, I come from an applied science university in Leiden, and on the website they stated that if you have a high enough GPA, you may apply without pre-masters. In addition, I did the courses you stated in another university and passed. Is this taken along? I think Matthijs is again to you. Yes, yeah, so th this is um, a, a relatively personal question about personal situation, so maybe I will not go into depth, but on a general level, everything you have done in terms of formal education is taken into account. So uh, a pre-master is only necessary if there is 
uh, a gap if you have deficiencies that need to be compensated. So we don't do pre-master just because there's pre-master. Um, so this is really determined on an individual basis. Uh, so if you have all the prior requirements, then indeed you can uh, be eligible for a direct admission. Uh, and to discuss this, it would be best to, to contact the, the study advisor. Okay, I think that sounds very clear. So while we are waiting for maybe a few more burning questions, I think uh, I had also a question to, uh, to our students. Uh, what were the most uh, interesting and fun courses that you took uh, <laughs> during the program? Oh, for me, my favorite course was urban computing. Um, it was n nothing I had ever done before, so that was very exciting. Um, and then I liked it so much that I decided to do a master's thesis with <laughs> uh, the professor from that course, and now uh, she's also my supervisor from a PhD. So. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> and for you, Rashid? Uh, for me, I think uh, there were multiple courses that I liked, and uh, especially the compulsory courses in our program is quite well, well tailored. And uh, one of the courses that I liked the most was the cloud computing, and uh, it was, uh, the assignments that were part of the pro course was re were really challenging and a lot of things that I had, hadn't done before. So, yeah. Nice, thank you. So we have another question from Effie now, and uh, the question is, you stated earlier that you can have semesters abroad, how many can you do, and other universities uh, Leiden works with uh, directly? Maybe again, Matthijs, it's uh, to you. Yeah, for going abroad, the, 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 the easiest way to do this is to do it as part of the master thesis research project because then you have a lot of time and you can go to a research group abroad to, to do this research project. Uh, and all the researchers in the institute have many excellent connections abroad. So uh, this is usually what we recommend students who would like to go abroad to, to do. Uh, it is also possible to take courses abroad, but this takes a bit more planning ahead. And uh, we, we have the, the regular uh, Erasmus agreement, so it, it, it is possible to do an Erasmus exchange. Um, but this takes a lot of planning ahead. And uh, yeah, especially in the, the, to do this timely, you would have to do it in the second year. And then it can interfere also with your master thesis research project, which also stu should start then. Um, so that's why yeah, we usually we recommend to go abroad for the thesis project in the fourth semester when you have all the time to, to do this. Thank you. Uh, so, so we don't have any more questions. And uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe we can conclude then our session today. So I would like to thank our students, Rashid and Julia, and uh, of course, Matthijs for joining me here today in this uh, studio. And uh, most importantly, thank you all uh, who watched uh, our talk show. And we hope that you have enjoyed this session, that you have learned uh, enough about our exciting Master in Computer Science program, and that it was helpful to you to make a decision what studies to pursue next. So if you're interested to know more about uh, our program, please make sure to follow the announcements and uh, we will make sure that there will be additional opportunities to uh, get in touch with our program and to learn more about it. For example, in February, we will organize an on-campus master's open day experience, which will give an opportunity to everybody to come to Leiden and meet us here in the Leiden Bioscience Park. And following that, in March and April, we will offer some example lectures, both uh, online and also on campus, that will give you an impression how student life uh, looks like uh, here in Leiden. So I wish you all a great day, and I hope to see you all soon at Leiden University. Bye-bye.